Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Talos of Tech Live on YouTube. Oh, this is weird. You guys, to you, this probably looks fairly normal, um, but I have to do some massive trickery to try to get Desk View to work. So every time I've done Continuity Camera Live, um, I've always gotten the most common message in the chat is do the de top Desk View thing, do the Desk View thing, because everyone wants to see Desk View. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't appear to be working that well, at least, um, for my iMac Pro, which is what I have the, the Ventura beta on. Um, I just updated it to the latest version, so I believe that's beta 5, so there's, there's no newer version of Ventura at this point, and it's supposed to launch next month, so... Um, the fact that it's still kind of clunky, uh, for one, I don't have the official mount, um, like the Belkin mount or whatever you're supposed to get that attaches via MagSafe to your iPhone, and then you attach that to the Mac, um, but I can hold the iPhone exactly where the mount would keep it, and I can tell you confidently that it's not working in its current state, but, uh, I have it mounted on a tripod right now, it's essentially at the exact same level, I'm looking at it right now, it's at the exact same level as my iMac Pro height, so if I were to get the Belkin adapter or whatever, it would be at around this elevation, um, but I have to tilt it to get it to work properly. So there are some changes they've actually rolled out. Um, did someone replace the real true with a Microsoft chip? Yeah, we'll, we'll have to talk about all this stuff in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, we've actually got a lot of stuff to unbox today. There is an explanation. Uh, and before you all panic, I did not buy these. Okay, so I stole them. No, um, we'll talk more about that later. I just want to talk about desk view for a minute. Hey, Lord Zero, thank you for uh, your support. I was trying to put it into words, plus I think M chips Max work better. To a certain extent, I get that, but I don't understand, like, what inherently does Apple Silicon have that an Intel Xeon processor can't do in terms of just knowing how to warp an image properly. So, um, when I put the the phone at the exact level that the mount would put it on my iMac Pro the the I showed it in the previous uh continuity camera live streams it just looks real warpy and buggy and when you tilt when you tilt the iPhone forward a bit which is why this is such a bizarre feeling to me because I look at the OBS preview and I look normal I look pretty fine um, even though we're on center stage right now, so it's tracking me around, you know, the quality's pretty good, but the phone itself is pivoted way, way down, so you'll notice, even though I have, uh, e even though I have center stage on, if I go up like this, it doesn't go very high, normally, it could track me all the way to the ceiling, and I could jump up and down, and you could see me, but the reason it doesn't go very high is because I'm at the limit, we are right at the edge of what the ultrawide lens allows for, um, so, wait, sounds a bit muffled and not very high res. It could be on your end, Gustavo, but let me hear what I sound like for a second. E even though I have center stage on, if I go... I think that's on your end, dude. Mine sounds pretty good. I mean, I'm not an audiophile, but it, it doesn't sound that... For considering I normally use my MacBook microphone and now I'm using my Zoom mic. Maybe the Zoom mic just sucks, I don't know. Um, maybe the desk is not big enough. It's a pretty freaking big desk, I'll be honest. But um, the, let me show you what they changed. We need that ceiling content. Uh, I actually think this desk is way too big. Mike can attest to that. We should trade desks, Mike, because I know you have a smaller desk. Anyway, um, so you go to control center up here. Uh, I have center stage turned on. But if I activate, see, it tells you the battery percentage. There's even more ways to view your battery percentage. If I activate desk view, it now has this really weird... <laughs> This, I'm trying to get this tripod to stay in the same place, but it's fighting me. Um, it gives you this little square layout. So this is actually the only way with continuity camera to see the ultrawide lens at almost full potential. It's still like a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, but um, they give you a little slider down here to adjust what you want it to zoom in on, but it's not that big a deal because you can change it after the fact anyway. Um, I guess I can cover this for a second just so you guys can see um but the desk is like i have it cropped in a bit because the live stream is 16 by 9 but desk view forces you basically to be in 4 by 3 and i can zoom it down like this but you'll see in a moment it looks really bad when i do that so um for the sake of the live stream and you guys being able to see i'm gonna leave it like this and then hit start desk view and when i'm at this orientation it 
kind of works, basically. <laughs> but it's very, very much kind of. Um, if you look back here, the hands... Well, I kind of have it cropped out here for a second. It, the reason I'm cropping in on the live stream, see, this is the full desk view, is like back here, things look quite jank. Like there's definitely a lot of uh, trickery going around to make this look normal and make it look natural, even though it definitely isn't. Um, it is a very weird uh, view of the room. But like, I think it becomes more obvious when you put something down. Like the MacBook keyboard seems pretty normal. The Magic Mouse seems pretty normal. Even my hand... Looks a little weird when I do this, you know, like the orientation and the warpness of it is, is kind of bizarre. Um, but as soon as I put a box down, like that's just sitting flat on the table. But look at how much of this you can see, right? Like, <laughs> and there's, there's certain laws of physics that you can't, you just can't beat. There's like no way around that because of where the iPhone is located. And I'm helping it a lot here. This is what happens when you pivot the iPhone downward um, if I were to pivot it upward and just leave it on the iMac with a mount, it would look much, much worse. Um, it would basically look as bad as it did in the other live streams. So you guys, if you remember those old streams, you know what those look like. But, um, a better indicator, um, of how this looks is if I get the old Tesla Semi out here. So we've got our big, our big toy Semi truck. If I just leave this flat... Look at, <laughs> look at how bizarre that is. So it doesn't handle depth very well, um, which is something you can't really program out no matter how good your silicon is. Um, it, it does feel like an optical illusion. If you're doing things flat, if they're completely flat on the table, it does work. But when you put something that has any sort of height, it, it does look bizarre and it does kind of give away that this is not actually a desk view. Um... But let me try to find something flat, you know, like if I grab this piece of pencil and I'm just taking notes like this, you know, it doesn't look that bad. You know, if I'm just leaving my hands flat or if I'm typing on the keyboard, um, it seems pretty normal. It's only when you start bringing in, you know, depth, if I start holding things up. I mean, it kind of works. It's a little bit disorienting, but it kind of gets the job done. What's, what's even weirder... No, we're not on the MacBook Pro, Randy. But hi, Randy. Thanks for joining. Um, I don't know why the system would work drastically differently. I think it is working as intended. Um, it's just a depth problem when your camera's so high. And it probably couldn't capture that much of my desk if it was on the laptop. But I will definitely try it again when we're on uh, Ventura on my MacBook. Um Johnny Ive does not approve of this. I also think it's still pretty cool. Yeah, it is trippy. What's more trippy to me is the fact that you guys have the little face cam down here. This is using the same lens. So, like, I'm, it's tracking me around down here. That's using the ultrawide lens. And everything down here is using the ultrawide lens. So I can only go a little bit higher, but that's about it. But the fact that it can see my face way up here and track with everything going on all the way up to, you know... A row of letters here. Hey, thanks for your support. Name I can't read or pronounce. Good to see you streaming. Yeah, I know. I I wanted to stream last week, but uh, life's been life's been crazy busy right now. Not bad stuff, just busy stuff with family and uh, friends and meeting up with people and just summertime. You know, everybody's getting together and stuff. Um, Halami says it looks better than before. I'm not entirely sure if they've fixed my issue with the Intel iMac Pro, but. I've at least found a way to kind of cheat it a bit, which is by pivoting the iPhone camera down. Uh, that seems to make this perform better. Um, but I can tell you confidently, if I just bought that Belkin adapter and put it on my iMac Pro, it would not look like this. Um, I could probably show you in a little bit what that would look like. But I wanted to just kind of hy hypothetically showcase what an, a live unboxing with desk view would look like. I don't know if you guys plan on doing that in the future. I might do it in the future. We'll see. Um, but yeah, we can talk about the, this, uh, Microsoft stuff in the meantime. So the, the, the story behind this, um, is we have kind of a family friend, kind of an in-law, but, uh, you know, a good friend of ours that actually works for Microsoft. Um, and he actually helped develop all of these accessories. So he had lots of them. I think he had more than he needed. He had like a bunch of them in a closet and we were visiting him. We were just hanging out and catching up cause we hadn't seen each other in a while and he was just like, hey, I know you do tech stuff. Uh, why don't you just, 
you know, try these, unbox these and let me know what you think. And he's like, I don't care if you don't like them. And I told him I'm mostly an Apple focused channel. So I don't know if it's good for me. And he was like, ah, I don't want them here. Just take them. Like, if you don't like them, that's fine. Um, but just check them out. So I figured, Hey, we're testing a, a unboxing setup. And also, uh, we got some accessories that I normally would never have, but, um, a good friend of ours basically hooked us up with. So why not try them out? Especially if I'm trying to do more gaming stuff. Um, this would be far better at Minecraft than this mouse, and I haven't really compared it to any other mouse recently, uh, but we've actually got a couple. He talked uh, he talked a lot about um, the Ocean Plastic mouse, which I was honestly pretty impressed with. Basically, they harness a bunch of plastic that ends up in the ocean and find a way to turn it into uh, the components you need to make a wireless mouse which I didn't even know was possible, and I don't think Apple does that kind of stuff. But this is the coolest product just in terms of sustainability that I wanted to check out. Um, I don't know if Apple can do that just because, well, the paper ripped right off. Um, I think they even designed something with this packaging so that you could put your old mouse in it and ship it back to them, and they would recycle it. Recycle it. Braxton says, how are you holding the phone up? It's just on a tripod on a box. Um... Yeah, it's a trashy mouse, but in the best way possible. 20% uh, recycled ocean plastic is in the shell is a small step forward in our journey. So yeah, his his department basically specializes in um, making these things. Oh, what? Oh, you open it that way. Oh, wow. Sorry, my, I keep forgetting. My face cam keeps covering this thing up. Okay, I've got to hold it about right here. This desk view thing is bizarre. Oh, wow. Oh, that is cool. It's definitely plastic, so it's not, you know, the aluminum and glass I'm used to. But wait, I'm doing this wrong. You pull this outward, and I think that puts a battery in place. Like this. I'm pulling, I'm pulling. Yeah, how hard do you have to pull it? Jeez. Or do I have to unlock it like this? Oh, I see. It uses a little double A. And then you pull it out the tab like this. Oh, now it's lit up. Now you put it back. I wonder how much they sell these things for. And there. Now it's now it's powered. It's got the little ocean wave thing on the side. It's a pretty small mouse, but it's cute looking. Now it's blinking. It's ready for pairing mode. You know, this is actually going to be helpful for me because... <laughs> I've been using the one Magic Mouse for my MacBook Pro, and I try to do a uh, universal control for my iMac Pro, but just this morning, right as I set everything up, uh, universal control didn't feel like working again, and I kept trying to activate it. Even though it was just working like a couple minutes ago, it's like, eh, I don't feel like it anymore. Um, looked like a 9-volt for a second. Yeah, the distortion's probably throwing it all off, huh? Yeah, it's blinking. It's like reading for pairing. So having a mouse that I don't use for everything, but like is dedicated for... Oh yeah, that scroll wheel is much more rigid. Um, having a mouse that can just stay connected to the iMac Pro is probably a good idea. Let me see if I can get it connected. Uh, Bluetooth setting. Uh-oh. Is my MacBook Pro freaking out? Hey! Can you guys see that? Look at all these AirPods. Oh, the magic keyboard with numeric keypad's about to die. If I hit connect, I like how it pretends it's a magic mouse, too. Oh, no! <laughs> I think it just died. Your Microsoft device cannot be identified. It will not be usable until it is identified. But I'm using it right now. Quit. It's fine. Does right-click work? Yeah, right-click works. Why is macOS freaking out? You can play nice. You can play nice with the keyboard. Don't wig out. Thank you, Neem, for the super chat. Is it hard to work at Microsoft and Google? I heard it was so. Congrats to your friend. P.S. Thoughts on iOS 16's new video player. I personally like the new video player, but yeah, I'm sure. I talked to him a bit. He's worked at Microsoft for like 20 or 30 years now. And yeah, he's he said he loves it and he enjoys it, but it's definitely a lot of hard work. I can imagine so. Can you guys imagine just pulling out random plastic from the ocean and just being like, okay, turn that into a computer mouse. But it's like a it's like a unique design. I don't think these little speckles on the outside and stuff are the same on every mouse. I like the little blue accents. It's kind of nostalgic feeling just because it's such a basic mouse, but 
the fact that there's absolutely no wires or even ports of any kind just because there's a little power button and then there's a little window. Jeez, this is so confusing. Where do I hold this mouse so that you guys can see it? But yeah, it's it's very basic, but for the essentials and for affordability and sustainability, it makes a lot of sense. The packaging's cool too. What else is in here? Um, just a little instruction booklet. That's cool. Yeah, they keep it basic, you know. Take the battery out, call it a day. Um, last name reveal. I don't think that was... Was that private? Did people not know my last name? Okay, whatever. But that's cool. Now we've got a, a dedicated mouse so my magic, uh, my magic mouse can stay connected to my MacBook Pro. And when I need to grab my iMac Pro for things, or if I'm gaming, I think I'll... I, I want to try this mouse too because this one's you know not made of ocean plastic but it's more ergonomic and I've always been told that the magic mouse is terrible for ergonomics I've been comfortable with it I've basically only used the magic mouse for like over a decade now I think looks like it's made of rec recycled apple plastic well on the off chance that apple plastic ended up in the ocean um oh, look at that blue light you can see it for a second Ooh. How does it do that? Whoa. I have harnessed the power of the sun. Because it's a laser sight, I see. So you can kind of see it. But yeah, it's. I like the tracking. It has that kind of classic, old-timey gateway click sound. Yeah, it's, it's not like a super premium feeling. But I want to compare it to the ergonomic mouse here. Ooh, wow. It's right there. It just pops right out. You've got these little extra buttons on the side, which you can probably map to whatever. Whoa! It's super light. You just lift it right up. Ooh! Need PV sample. I don't know. Am, am I getting, like, unreleased hardware? I don't know. Maybe that's not out yet. We've got just some instructions in here. There's no cables or anything. Does it need batteries? <laughs> Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> I was like, no wonder it's so light. That makes sense. Um, shoot. Okay. That definitely... Eh, it's a pretty similar sound. So that's supposed to be more ergonomic. I've already got mouses connected to everything. Back and forward by default. Okay. That's a very deep click. Let's compare the click sounds. Let's compare mouses between everybody. So we've got apples here. Oops, I'm clicking Mac OS now. We've got the apple. Matt, I'll get them as close to the microphone as I can. So this is the... Uh, I'm sorry I freaked out. There was like a paperwork on the... There was like a, a warning on the bottom of this thing that says need needle hill PV sample. So it's like maybe a not not for resale. Like I got something that's meant to be tested and not actually... <laughs> not actually bought but that's weird like the seam on it um it's i'm trying to get it so you can see it in the lighting but it's kind of dark uh the seam is like open for when you click but then it quietly goes away along the edges which is kind of cool but anyway ben rayner thank you for the super chat all this surface stuff i didn't realize the ipad os team hurt you so bad <laughs> would love a review of how this stuff works with ventura yeah um we so far this mouse is ready to go out the box because it actually has a battery in it. I don't know if uh, this was supposed to have batteries in it or just because it's a sample it doesn't have batteries. But yeah, I did not have those. Um, but it's certainly bigger. I don't know if I would say more comfortable though. I guess it's supposed to be more ergonomic. That's a very loud click. Some people like that clicky sound. Maybe it's just my issue of I'm used to live streaming stuff and I'm used to like audio settings and you know I turn off all my fans and air conditioning so you guys can hear me okay but um it's just a deeper click you know versus this is eh, you know it's probably a closer decibel rating but and then this is the ergonomic one yeah that one's definitely deeper but it has a bit more of a wing to the side for you to rest your thumb on I guess that's kind of comfortable. Maybe I could get used to that. I guess I just got used to my 
magic mouse with my thumb just being kind of on the ground and your palm rests on the desk. Is that bad? Should I not do that? Uh, Microsoft and Android stuff sucks. I don't believe all of it sucks. This one's, like, just from a manufacturing point of view is fairly impressive. I would love to see Apple make, like, AirPods out of recycled plastic. That would be pretty cool. Especially if it lowered the price, you know, then you guys would actually care about it. But, you know, sometimes you should just give credit to people for making something more sustainable. And that's what I want to give credit to that today. But just for the sake of switching... Oh, yeah. The scroll wheels that have the little ridges in them are definitely much better for gaming. This sucks for gaming, although I've done it. <laughs> um, Magic Mouse OP. Uh, Drew has a pest issue on this stream today. Where? Uh, Apple made you mad that they didn't invite you to the spaceship. No, I wouldn't. I've said before, even if I was invited, I wouldn't go. I don't, I don't need to go to the spaceship. I've been to the spaceship. I haven't been inside it, but I've been on the outside, and I was like, okay. Um, they wouldn't answer any of the questions I would ask anyway. I would be like, so, where's the calculator app? And they'd be like, oh, that's, that's not on script. Basically, everyone that gets interviewed at Apple has to stick to a script script and they have to do pre-approved questions and I don't I don't feel like doing all that um James thank you for your support he says currently your desk has many pointing devices as mine does on a normal d day I have four keyboards and four trackpads wow four wow that must that's probably because of your uh, hand I assume but yeah speaking of accessibility um Microsoft probably has a bit more of an emphasis on that than Apple does but um we have an ex we have a keyboard here Designer Compact, which is something I wish uh, Apple made. This is a, a black keyboard, which is closer to that of my Magic Space Gray Magic Keyboard here, but it has the numeric keypad attached to it. And I would rather it be compact like this, so that it's basically the keyboard as my MacBook Pro, but just lift it out in Bluetooth. Um, oh, because of all the mice. Thank you, Mike. I get the joke. It has been thoroughly explained. All right, I'm going to pull the plastic tabs here. Not sure if this will even work with a Mac. I'm, I'm maybe finding a home for some of these. Okay, I pulled the plastic. Is there something else I'm missing? Where does it? Oh, does it slide? Ah, I see. Ooh, this has got some weight to it. I can already tell. Nice. Ooh, wow, that is clean. Much smaller. This is almost. Is this smaller than my MacBook? Uh, just a tad wider, actually. It's a little bit wider than the MacBook keyboard, but that's a... Yeah, that's... Honestly, it looks very Mac-like. They're not that different. Other than the uh, option and... What is this? Favorite key? But that's a cool look. It's very planted. Whoa! That's amazing how rigid it stays when you just leave it on the desk. Yeah, it does not want to move once you set it down. What else is in here? We got some pamphlets, some packaging padding, and I think that's it. Yeah. It feels nice, though. I like it. Chris says, what are we talking about today? Basically, we're testing desk view for this little test unboxing here where I'm unboxing some Microsoft accessories that my friend who works at Microsoft gave me. Um... And he's okay if I say bad things. I did not have to sign a contract. This is not a sponsorship. He said, if you don't like it, that's fine too. He welcomed any and all uh, criticism. My one criticism, I don't know if he's watching this, <laughs> but if you are watching this, my only criticism, and I don't know if there's other Microsoft accessories that resolve this, but I'm not personally a fan of AA batteries. I don't know how you guys feel. The battery life on these things are supposed to be really good though. Like, I prefer a weaker battery that I can recharge because I don't like having to go to the store and buying double A's. Hey, Michael Lazito, thank you. Um, he says, hope you had a good weekend. It was a busy weekend, but it was good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, can I order that keyboard for Mac? Maybe you could. Let me connect it to a Mac and just see if it works. Um, that's the first thing we should figure out. But wait, there was instruct there was information on the side here. Yeah, look at this. It uses uh, four CR2032 batteries. Is that like AirTag batteries? But it says up to up to 36 month battery life. So almost three years on a single charge? 
That probably explains why there's no ports on it, right? I mean, there's no ports, but that definitely makes it look super clean. Um, the keyboard looks very small. Could be the distortion, though. It's it's about the size of the keyboard on my MacBook Pro. If you just lifted that out. Um, Option Command Media. Oh my God! Thank you for the super chat. He says, "Hello, Drew. Do you like the iPad 10 leaks? Will you buy it?" <laughs> As far as iPads go, and as long as it still remains affordable, I, I mean, I'll review it. I don't know if I'll, I definitely won't buy it to keep it because my iPad Pro is better. But um, I may consider reviewing it. But yeah, I think a, a cheaper iPad that has Apple Pencil 2 support and USB-C, yeah, that's a win. I mean, I'm not a fan of the home button and touch ID or whatever, but... Uh, Joey says it should work. There's no reason why it shouldn't. I like that look a lot better than all the white keyboards you have to buy today. Like, all, if you want an external keyboard um, from Apple, it has to be white. Uh, or it has to be with the numeric keypad. It has to be like this one, which is way too big, in my opinion. I don't need the numeric keypad, so this feels chonk to me. And I like the look. I, like, I think the desks look much cleaner, you know? I'm tempted to just switch this with my... Magic Keyboard. You know why? I'll tell you. <laughs> because my Magic Keyboard here still uses Lightning, which I hate. And if I use if I use the Ocean Plastic Mouse and this, uh, what's it called? Designer Compact Keyboard with my iMac Pro, it won't need to, I won't need to charge Lightning accessories anymore. I guess I'll still use my Magic Mouse with my MacBook Pro, but... That I can just use MagSafe Duo for, which is just off camera. The delete key looks small, though. Yeah, I guess up here you have delete, you have lock. Um, I want to hear your thoughts on Ergo ma Mouse. Sorry, did I not talk much about this? Unfortunately, it doesn't have batteries in it, so I can't fire it up. But um, I think here, what's kind of impressive, uh, Magic Mice don't have this. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of hard to tell. But there's a little Bluetooth key. There's a Bluetooth button, and it says one, two, three. I think that means you can connect multiple devices to this mouse, and if you press the button, then it switches the device you want it to control. Which is pretty smart, um, especially if you're using multiple devices. Hopefully, universal control would alleviate the need for you to switch, but like I just experienced, universal control is not always that reliable. Sometimes it works great, other times, like, it was working fine 20 minutes as I was setting up this live stream. For like a long time, I was trying to get it to work. And then suddenly, five minutes before we begin, I need universal control and it doesn't work. So sometimes to have like a hardware backup is kind of useful. Um, I would have to use this for a while. I think if I was gaming more, this would be... I might get into gaming more, I don't know. We've been posting more on the gaming channel, but that's all Skylar's fault. <laughs> is the mouse and keyboard the last lightning accessories you have? Uh, I mean, if you don't count AirPods, I do have the Siri remote for my Apple TV. That takes lightning. Delete key isn't often used, and in macOS, you use function delete key to do Windows delete, a.k.a. reverse backspace. Oh. I don't know if delete key on this keyboard does reverse backspace. Yeah, I'm, I want to fire it up. This does not have any ports on it, Mike. There's no USB-C. It's just battery power. But I'm surprised by these little rubber feet on the back. They are really solid. Wait, how do you... Oh, there's like a, there's like a little pinhole here. There's like a sim eject key. Oh, I should have had a sim ejector tool. I didn't know. But, okay. It says it should have a 36-month battery life, which is pretty insane. Let me switch power on. Okay. I turn the power on. There's no lights. I mean, I didn't expect... Oh, wait. Yeah, there is. There's one right here. Oh, this is cool. See, the Bluetooth key has a 1, 2, and 3 on it as well. Can you see that? I'm sorry, it's kind of hard. It's flashing, so there is a little light. But you can connect this keyboard to, I think, three separate devices and just switch between them, which you also can't do on the Magic Keyboard. That way, oh, that way I could connect it to the iMac Pro, switch it to the MacBook Pro. This is kind of nice, i got to admit. I know people don't like the... Um, arrow keys, the, the side arrow keys to be full. Apple used to do that with their MacBooks, but then they went back to the inverted T arrow keys because coders were complaining, but I kind of like the full-size arrow keys. It feels like a more 
effective use of space. Let me try to connect it to my MacBook here. Sorry, you guys won't be able to see the settings, but I want to get it to connect to both the iMac and the MacBook simultaneously. I think that would be fun. Yep, designer compact keyboard. Let's go. Oh, it wants a pairing request. So I go one. Is this doxing me or something? I don't think so. Followed by the return key. Okay, enter. I think it's connected. Does it have an emoji key though? Ooh, I think you can set one to be. Did it work? Test, no? That was weird. I prefer the full size side arrows personally. Okay, it's not just me. Randy agrees. Oh my God, this is so confusing. Okay, I'm trying. Five, seven, two, four, eight, nine. Enter. Okay, now it says connected. Let me try that. Keyboard setup. Your Microsoft device cannot be identified and it will not be usable until it is identified. What? Oh, identifying your keyboard. It, it's walking me through a little thing here. Um... It wants me to press the keys directly across from the shift. And we are North America, done. Let me see. Yeah, okay, it works. Backspace works, one, two, three. Oh, hey, thank you for the super chat, Option Command Media. He says, I keep my SIM tool on my keychain. That's a really good idea. Why didn't I think of that? Delete key is the same as Control D. Oh, gotcha. Okay, do these work? Yeah, volume works. The volume keys are in a different space, but mute works up and down. That's cool. The search? No, I don't think that works. What do these buttons do? Um, Mac OS Ventura update today, but watch TV and iPad have dev betas. Oh, cool. Can I lock it? No, the lock key doesn't work. Well, it says, I don't think it's advertised to work with a Mac anyway, but... Something here was. I can't remember. Oh, yeah, it's the headset. Yeah, we still have more stuff to unbox. This is cool. Okay. Um, anything else I could try? Oh, yep. When I press the pause button, music opened immediately. Let's quit that. I don't know what it's going to play. Two-factor authentication for Microsoft device parent. Yeah, pretty much. Tab works. Caps lock has a little light. I'm just amazed that this thing is supposed to last three years on a charge. Does that sound right to you guys, or are they exaggerating? Wow, the sensitivity on the ocean mouse is actually really high. Okay, let me try something. I want to see device switching in action. Check out Drew totally not abuse Minecraft chickens on his gaming channel. Mike, I abuse Minecraft chickens by harnessing their eggs. You harness real chicken eggs, which makes it more offensive okay what just happened did that I, I hit the bluetooth key so it's still connected do i have to hold it down you can remap those keys as far as I can. oh wait no that's not what i want it's blinking again huh so i think i just put it back in pairing mode how do you switch it? I should read instructions. Huh? I'm pressing arrow keys. Oh, now it's on one. Okay, it's a, it, it's it's a different light that's lighting up. Let me see if I can connect it. Um, is it three years? Then it's dead for good, or replace the battery? <laughs> no, it's it re it's replaceable batteries. Obviously, they're in here. You just need the sim eject tool. Um, but yeah, it says thirty up to 36 months using CR2032 batteries, which I, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't those the same batteries that an AirTag uses, or are they different? My chickens eat their own eggs if I don't collect them. I'm preventing cannibalism as far as I'm concerned. Wow, that's morbid. Who are you to decide? No, I'll, st I'll stop there. Uh, nine, seven, four... Oh, you guys can see it now. Hit enter. Connected. All right. See, this is this is the setup I just did on the other computer. You hit Z, and then you hit 
question mark. North America. Done. All right. So now, um, mission control and modifier keys. So just search modifier keys and settings. Oh, this will be cool. Let me see. Um, I'm typing this on the iMac Pro using the compact keyboard. Hey, hey, it works. All right, what does this button do? That'd be fun. It's just a Windows button. Yeah, I'm sure modifier lets me control this. But if I switch... Wait, how how is that so easy? Now I can switch to the... Whoa, it works! Okay, I hit the, <laughs> hit the Bluetooth key and it switched to the MacBook Pro. I am typing this on the MacBook Pro. Okay, that's super cool. Oh, I, I mean, universal control should make that go away, but sometimes universal control doesn't work, so it's kind of nice to have just a, a way to switch between. I guess you hold it down to switch. How about now? Ooh. Oh, it acts as an option key, so the, I can still select all like that. Um, how do you do control? Does command as alt work? Hold on. We don't want to close an application accidentally here. Um, what can I open that doesn't matter? Build. Yeah, let's see. Okay, okay so this kind of acts as a command key. I can command quit applications using the Windows button. Interesting. That's fascinating. Can I pair that keyboard to my fridge? Oh, uh, that totally depends on the type of fridge you have. I bet there's some Samsung fridge that has gaming capabilities, right? Windows key equals command, alt equals option. Got it. So these are kind of back and forth. these are kind of swapped. Interesting. I need that's that's cool that it's so easy to switch between devices like that. It can can I pair that? Oh, sorry, I read. Drill is slowly be con being converted to the PC side. <laughs> Join the dark side. No. I mean, I like the dark keyboard, but, um, well, I won't say too much, but uh, we had some conversations about Surface hardware on the trip, and there's definitely some things he asked me not to share, but there may or may not be a Surface product in my future. That's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. You don't need to know anything else because... I do not want to burn any bridges. What's in here? Is this more paperwork? This is like a beefy pamphlet for the ergo mouse. We actually have more stuff, if you can believe it. Um, this box is probably the most interesting because it actually says uh, Mac OS on the back. Windows 10 and Mac OS supported. So it's a headset that he worked on and it's specifically built for Microsoft Teams, so I don't think it's like Surface headphone type sound quality, but I figured I'd, it's probably much cheaper than Surface headphones for basic like meetings and stuff. Um, do you like the recycled mouse more than the other black one you open? Well, because it has a battery in it, yeah. <laughs> the fact that it actually works um, is nice, but... I don't know. It has a cheaper feel to it for sure. This one, I don't know if that's an actual metal, but it's definitely like, what's it called? Chamfered. It's a shiny scroll wheel. Um, opposed to this one, which is just plasticky. It feels kind of like a toy mouse, but that makes sense when you realize how they made it. You know, just taking plastic out of the ocean and then cranking a mouse out of it. Um, so this one has the same Bluetooth keys, but yeah, I, it might take some getting used to, but I could probably get comfortable with the little, it has a little thumb wing on the edge that you can just rest your thumb there. But I'm not, I'm not a super big fan of how loud the click is. Maybe that's just from my live streaming uh, days, but I notice when a mouse is pretty loud and the magic mouse is fairly high pitched. So it's, you know, it can fly into the radar pretty easily when you're clicking. Okay, Martin says it is metal. Yeah, you know, when I click it down, it does have more of a metallic feel to it. Center stage still likes to wander. It would be kind of cool if it could use the ultra-wide camera for the 
bottom view and then it could use the main lens for my angle but right now that wouldn't work anyway just because I'm pointing the iPhone so far down but yeah it's uh the main chassis of it is plastic and this I kind of understand being so cheap because of how much recycled materials it uses but if this one's using less recycled materials I'm a little bit more disappointed that it requires sorry it requires uh two AA batteries I would rather recharge but that's just a personal preference thing um, some people might prefer the AA approach. Do you guys know if one is better for the environment than the other? My stupid monkey brain would assume that, uh, having a rechargeable battery, even with the stupid charging method, like the magic mouse, results in you having less e-waste because you don't have old dead batteries that you have to take the time to take to a place to recycle. So I try to never use um double a batteries as much as possible if there's if there's an alternative I'll, I'll try not to use them because you add to the whole recycling process um of batteries which i don't know if that's better for the environment but it's probably worse if you're the type of person that doesn't go and try to recycle their batteries and sometimes you know i don't recommend this obviously but there's people that will just kind of leave all their old double a's uh, in the garbage or they, you're not supposed to throw them out, but people do them or they leave them in a drawer and they just kind of leave them lying around. Um, batteries, I know batteries are recyc recyclable. Blue Fridge says, I'm sure batteries that you toss out are worse. I don't think you're supposed to toss out double A's, but regardless of what you're supposed to do, there's probably a lot of people that do that. So, um, many people throw away batteries. Yeah, it's, it's bad in this kind of increases the likelihood that you will toss out um the, it increases the likelihood that you will toss out the batteries even if you know hopefully someone buying a recycled plastic mouse is smart enough to realize they're not supposed to do that but um whereas if you buy a rechargeable mouse like this it kind of guarantees that they're not going to throw it out well it's it's probably less likely that they're going to throw it out and the batteries inside um you are more likely to have uh, battery degradation when you use a battery that you recharge over and over again. But I've, I've, you know, I'm still happy with the battery life on the Magic Mouse too, even though I've had it for five years now. It's coming up on five years. Thank you for the super chat, Connor. He says, "What iPad size do you prefer, 12.9 inch or 11 inch?" You know, I don't use my iPad anymore, so it's kind of hard to say. I mean, back when I was using it like a laptop and I didn't have a MacBook and I had the Magic Keyboard case and everything, I preferred the 12.9 inch size because that was the closest to a MacBook you could get and the keyboard felt a lot better. I think if you're not going to use a Magic Keyboard case and you're just using it as a tablet with the touch screen and the virtual keyboard, the 11 inch is probably better because I really enjoyed that size back when I reviewed the 11 inch iPad Pro. I thought that was comfortable. Um, and I, I thought it was a good size, but... I just thought if you were using more accessories and you were trying to have a more pro workflow, like if you're going to do Stage Manager, if you're going to do Luma Fusion on your iPad, the 12.9 inch is probably better. But if it's just for like Twitter, Discord, media consumption, although even for media consumption, my wife has said that she prefers the bigger screens on everything. Like she prefers bigger iPad screen if possible, bigger laptop screen if possible, bigger desktop. Like back in the day when I... I used to use a 13 inch macbook pro she was like hey why is this one so small i prefer like if, if we're watching a tv show in the kitchen or in bed or whatever she wants it on the bigger laptop on the bigger screen so um i i i guess i prefer the 12.9 inch but i don't i don't use either now so it's hard to say um Marjol says i wouldn't mind having a rechargeable magic mouse if the battery can be easily replaced i guess yeah, they don't make it easy to replace, huh? That'd be kind of neat if that, that'd be a good product to start on, right? Because it's not terribly complicated. But Daryl King says I throw them away. Stop it, Daryl. Um, Blue Fridge says I leave them in my backpack till they explode. <laughs> uh, Margel says in the long term, having replaceable batteries is better for the environment. Batteries can easily be recycled. I think that's the problem, Margel, is it requires active uh, recycling on the end user. So replaceable batteries are better if everyone recycles them, but not everyone recycles them. I think that's the holdup. Um, AA rechargeable is a good alternative. Yeah, I've never done that. Where do people do that? Who buys batteries these days, I guess? 
AirTags have replaceable batteries for a reason. I know they do, but I still would have preferred a rechargeable one, but that's just me. Drew's thought is go big or go recently small. <laughs> now I, all my phones are big now, too. Anyway, let's check out this headset because he told me a little bit about this mic design. I want to see how they feel. Uh, yeah, the Magic Mouse 1 came with double A's and they kept getting dislodged. They broke all the time. Whoa! Look at that. They're pretty clean looking. Ooh. Wow. You got a little plastic tab here. Okay. There's some pretty glossy looking finishes here. That's a nice little plastic tab. Oh, they have controls here. Up and down, microphone. Are they touch controls or are they just buttons? Oh, I see. They're buttons. And I think you have a little plastic tab here that conceals the mic. You just pull that off. Mic comes down like this. And boom. Oh, are they adjustable? These are nice fabrics, though, they used on the side. It's a nice texture. Um, let me, oh, wow. These just slide out the edge. That They're hidden pretty well in the, in the little handles. You don't really see where they slide out from. Let me see if this fits my big head. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're on-ear headphones, which I'm traditionally not a fan of, but they don't. They don't, like, push down too hard. They're very gentle, which is nice. And I think he said that when you lift the mic up like this, it um, physically, like, disconnects it or it mutes you. So you don't keep hearing things when the mic is up, which makes sense. But I think that's the point, Lou. I think it's supposed to be an affordable headset. I don't have the price right on me, but... Does anyone with access to Google want to look up what the, uh, what is it called? Microsoft Modern Wireless Headset. Yeah, they've got to be affordable considering they use, they use a USB-A port to connect. So I know I'm not using this with my MacBook. Ooh, they came with a cable, though. I didn't know. Finally! USB-C! It's about dang time. Although it's they, they get a strike in my book because it's not Type-C to Type-C. It's USB-A to Type-C. Though that likely makes more sense for the market they're serving. If they're trying to be affordable, then um, USB-A is probably more commonplace. But we know it ain't working with the... Uh... Wait, did they... They must charge, right? Where's the port? They've got Type-C over Lightning, so it wins that over AirPods for me. Um, they're meant for children, so dank pause. <laughs> they're $100. Okay. Yeah, not super cheap, but, you know, cheaper than AirPods. And they've got... I want to see how the mic sounds, actually. Maybe we could turn the turn this on and switch to the mic for the live stream and see how they sound. Daniel says $80. <laughs> Look at this. It's like a tiny little USB thing. That plugs into a... Which my iMac Pro has USB-A. Hey, um, so let me try to plug that in, see what happens. Give me a second here. Did they just connect right away? Okay. I plugged them in. Does it know to connect? <laughs> Designer Ocean Plastic Mouse. Uh, sound. Microsoft USB Link. Okay, I think I'm connected. Let me check. Oh yeah, this is all different now. Input. Mouse, keyboard, red. Dang it, did they move everything? Sound, is that what I'm looking for? Okay, yeah, let me switch OBS to the $75 on Amazon, okay. Um, let me switch OBS. See how it sounds. I don't know if I did it right. 
might have connected it incorrectly. Or it may not have the drivers or something. <laughs> Let's go to backup here. Sorry, camera's wobbling all over the place. Just stay where you are, iPhone. Jeez. Okay, output. I want to listen to some... Oh my god, there's so many keyboards. It's hard to keep track. Um, yeah, no sound. Let's go to backup here. Drew is now your dedicated tech support agent ready to assist you. <laughs> That's right. Um, I want to listen to... Man, when I'm always stumped when I'm trying to pick something here. I keep... There's too many mice. I'm going to yeet this ratatouille. Sweats nervously. Uh, Alright, I'm listening to Randy. Can I hear it? Okay, something might be off then, because I'm still not getting any sound. Even though, you know, these things said Mac OS, right? Do they not have power or something? Maybe that's... Maybe I'm missing something. Oh, yeah! Oh my god, I'm an idiot. They're freaking... Oh, it says six... It says six hours of battery. Oh, they're playing now. I'm such an idiot, I forgot you have to turn them on. My my brain was set to AirPods mode, and I thought that... I thought you had to... Just put them on and they start working. Okay, we're listening to some Randy tunes. They're pretty treble heavy. Let me hear. They're pretty medium. The, the mids are the mids are good. There's definitely not much of a woofer in these things, but that's likely because they're specialized for Microsoft Teams. They're meant for voice calls, so you don't need that much bass. But the clarity is very impressive. They're not, like, muffled. It feels fairly high bitrate. Okay, now we can probably switch the microphone over since I've turned the dang thing on. Let me try that. Test, test. Ooh. Am I too loud now? I think we should be on... Sorry, I'm worried that I'm too loud. Only Apple can get away with not putting a power switch with their earbuds and headphones. Uh, that's true, and this is not um, this is not Apple. Sounds good on this end. You like them, Juan? Prediction, they have a mid-focus sound. Yeah, they do. I think you were right on that front. <laughs> he says, oh, never mind. <laughs> I am now your tech support agent. You can get rechargeable double or triple A batteries, I'm pretty sure. Sorry, I'm back. I don't know what happened. Did I touch him? Did I hit the mute key? Did I hit... I don't know what I did. <laughs> I muted myself. Okay, well, now you know what these sound like. Um, I need to compare them probably to some competitors before I could say I recommend them. They are comfortable, and they have a mid-focus sound, which is good, but... Yeah, I feel like AirPods would be a more elegant solution, but I guess they don't have a wired option. It's definitely cheaper than AirPods Max, that's for sure. And I appreciate them for being Type C. They could have done, they could have done micro USB. 
People are saying I muted myself. I think I fixed that, though. There's a rechargeable mouse. You can just throw those out. <laughs> Do people actually throw out their old mice? I don't... I hope not. I hope that's not a thing. Um, let me make sure you can... On micro USB. All right. I think you can hear me. Um, oh, but there's an accessory I forgot about that goes with the... Uh, whoops. There's an accessory that goes with the key, uh, compact keyboard. So if you want the numeric keypad, I personally don't use it that much, but if you want one, this is like a whole separate box, a separate accessory. Oh, wow, with its own separate batteries and everything. Oh, it even has a calculator mode. That's interesting. Basically, if you want the calculator on your iPad, there you have it. So you can put it next to this one. That way, if you need the keypad, you have it, but if you don't need it, you can just keep your desk set up a lot. Uh, they can keep it a lot better. Um, were you telling us what you recently thought of us while muted? Yes. I, I, I talked about where I live. I talked about my social security number. I said the password to my YouTube channel and even the two-factor authentication. Yeah, I gave away everything. Thank God I happened to be muted at the time. But this is just a little tab to help you get it out of the box. Okay. Yeah, that one's kind of the same concept. It feels a little bit easier to move around. This one has more surface tension, so you can yeah, keep it that way. I like switching. That's nice. Now I switched it back to the MacBook. Um, famous comment line. You're on mute. Whoops. Yeah, somehow I muted these. I don't know if I bumped something, but... Yeah, I was in the middle of talking on them, and then I just switched out to something else. Um, I wish they connected with magnets so they don't use a separate battery. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, like a little smart connector thing. Could shrink, and then they just expand the power. Does this say the battery life? Oh, this one's 12 months because it uses one cell. It uses one CR2032 battery. So that's that's going to need to be replaced more quickly. Quickly, Assuming I turn it on, I don't need to turn it on. You can kind of assume how it works. Maybe you could use that as like its own separate gamepad, you know, if you were just looking for the WASDA controls. You can do maybe jump or something. Yeah, it's kind of small for that. <laughs> you can tell I'm not a gamer. Okay, I think we have one more thing. I do have one more product. <laughs> My name is Druder White. I live at 2468 Pear Pod Road. <laughs> Jesse, it's time to unbox the Microsoft Surface accessories. <laughs> this one says for DV only. Does that mean it's not released? Am I not allowed to show this? Oops. This is a uh, speaker. Oh, and it comes with its own little uh, traveling case. Look at that. It's got your little Microsoft logo. Oh, it's already in the box. Oh, interesting. This is a nice little travel case. Ooh, whoa. Look at that thing. The fabric mesh on it is really clean. Comes out of this. Sorry, it's so dark. I wish the camera was better at capture. It's pretty bright in here, honestly. It's not that dark, but the camera makes it look kind of dark. Look at this mesh f fabric. Oh, that is clean. So you've got volume, and you've got your Teams button, and then a mic. So there's a little plastic tab, I think, on the bottom. So I'll just peel this off. Oh, no, that's a cable. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa. I thought that was part of the packaging. You just pull it out like this. And it comes out of the base. Oh my god, how long is this cable? Dude. It keeps going. Am I never going to get this back in the box? Whoa. That is trippy. Okay. It's this long. It's a pretty long cable. It's type C, which I appreciate. And I think there's little paper tab you can pull off here. At least it looks like it's something you can pull off. I just completely destroyed the product. Um, it seems like Sunsea Riley. 
Uh, it's a communication speaker. That thing is $69 on Microsoft website. Okay, so it's pretty affordable. 69 bucks. I wonder how it sounds. This is probably good for people that don't have all-in-ones, which Windows people rarely do. I like that look, though. It's very lightweight, and the fabric looks nice. Um, and it's very small. And how do you wind it up? Like this? Oh, wow, look. The cable, when you're winding it, just kind of sneaks in the footprint. That is super impressive, how it just slides in like that. The cable's, like, almost completely hidden. And then how do you get the last little bit left? Oh, you can pull it back. You pull it, you pull back the plastic like that, and then, boom, cable is hidden, nowhere to be seen, there's no cable, it's just this little brick of life that provides sound, but then when you're ready, you just, whoop, pull the USB-C cord out, and unwind, like that, it's an energizer bunny in disguise, that is really cool. I don't see a power button, so I'm assuming it just needs power, and then it lights up. Let me try. I think we should have a free Type-C port. Do we? Am I using them all? No, there's one more. Okay. Are we in? I think it's in. That is... Oh, it's lighting up. Making sound. Oh, that's a mute key. So it lights up red. Then this is. Oh, this changes the volume on the computer. That's funny. I don't know if you can see that. No, you can't. Maybe it's. Yeah, this might be a good product for Mac Mini users. If you're because those don't have a great speaker, but I want to see what they sound like. Luckily, we have Randy's stream queued up here. Man calls it a brick of life, then pulls out its innards. <laughs> You're supposed to, Mike. It's intentional. Boy, I have a messy desk right now, don't I? Okay. Let me... What are you connected to? What happened? Oh, you're on the iMac. Okay. Um, speakers. We have so many options. It says modern USB-C speaker. I like that. Because the Mac Mini has USB-C, right? Whoa! Okay, I am convinced. I am cursed. Literally <laughs> cursed. Um, Randy's see talking. If I can actually show you, show you something. Hang on. Look at this. First of all, power of the all iPhone. Right. I think I, that's I full volume. It. It's very Quiet. clear. Hang on a second. Oh. I'll bring my mic with me here. Can you? Let's play his music. Whoa. Okay, I guess kind of similar to the headphones, this is definitely focused on, on teams, so it's not super bass heavy, but it's very clear. Randy is coming out of my modern speaker. So you can put it at the base of your computer. I think it's pretty loud. Yeah, I would put it at about, how would I describe that if I was reviewing it? I would say this is about like half a HomePod mini. It's pretty close to the sound of like a, a Google Nest or something like that, but around the same price and it's got the mute key right on it. And I think it has the mic built in. Oh, can I switch to it in OBS? It sounds very tinny. Yeah, it's... It's kind of on the, the higher end. There's there's not much of a bass focus, but especially when Randy was talking, it sounded pretty clear. Let me try USB-C speaker. Test, test. Can you hear me? So I think this is what the mic sounds like when you're talking directly to the speaker, and we're coming from the Zoom mic. It's about the sound quality of Beats X. Is that even... Those are headphones, aren't they? How do you compare headphones to a speaker? It's a cute little thing. 
how do I sound now that you're using the onboard mic? <laughs> Excuse me. What's the metric measurement for sound quality? We're hearing the stream twice through two speakers, so it's going to feel small. Can't hear you. Okay. That's good. How do I... How do I sound now that you're using the onboard mic? <laughs> it has that kind of like What's webcam the metric feel. measurement for sound quality? Yeah, it has that kind of webcam feel to it of like the little clicks in the back, but can you hear me now? Yeah, I assume that a dedicated Zoom mic is probably going to sound better, so that doesn't surprise me. But considering it's just a little, what is it, $60 accessory that you just plug in and you can, it comes with a travel case and you've got the volume buttons right on it. You've got the mute key right on it. That's kind of nice. People are saying not terrible, not bad. I think it gets quiet pretty well considering the fan noise. You sound like you locked in a room. Well, I'm pretty I'm pretty much locked in a room right now. That sounds accurate what you played back. <laughs> well, it was hearing itself through itself. So <laughs> that's that makes sense. Um the the MacBook microphone oh no. The MacBook microphones aren't even being used. It's the yeah, it's the modern USB-C mic picking up itself. I'm more impressed with that like that hidden cable design. That makes me want to see like a, a mobile HomePod. An iPod, if you will. No, wait, that doesn't make sense. Like a little pill-shaped speaker like that that you can pack around with you. Does it sound better if I'm really close? Or does it sound creepy because I have to talk quieter? Can you hear me now? Or is it like naturally, well, yeah, it's like naturally preventing itself from peaking at OBS. I don't know how that sounds. I, I want to hear it. Does it sound better if I'm really close? <laughs> or does it sound creepy because I have to talk quieter? Can you hear me now? Or is it like naturally, well, yeah, it's like naturally preventing itself from peaking at OBS. I don't know how. Oh, weird. It sounds like... <laughs> The days when you were in the attic. Yeah, I don't know what that what that description is. It's something like the... Uh, it's like a webcam feel. It, there's like, it picks up little clicks and it picks up little ticks. Maybe that's a onboard uh, compression thing. Maybe it performs better when it's connected to a Windows machine, but we're not going to... We're not going to find that. Uh, we're not going to find out that today. Why would you buy that instead of an $80 Bose Bluetooth speaker? Uh, yeah, I guess if you're just going for pure sound quality, I don't, I haven't listened to an $80 Bose Bluetooth speaker. I used to have a $200 Bose SoundLink Mini, and that sounded really good. I don't know how much the $80 ones, but those don't have a microphone. This is trying to be like, uh, uh, Teams, because it has a, a call button, it has a, I don't even know what the Teams button is supposed to do, but I clicked it and it lit up. Mute button. So it's, it's serving the purpose of trying to be an accessory for at-home use or, um, you know, people doing online meetings and, and video calls all the time. Clicks and ticks. Quirks and features, yeah. A little less quality, and I think the volume is a bit lower when you don't move it closer. Huh. When I don't move it closer. But, yeah, it would probably be worse sounding than a Bose speaker, but better for video calls if you want something to double as your microphone. But honestly, if people, because I know most of you guys are Apple people, um, your better bet if you were buying a Mac Mini is likely to just use your iPhone through, like I'm doing right now with continuity camera. Use the onboard iPhone mic and use the onboard camera. And then I guess that's not a great speaker solution, huh? Well, I guess if this was your budget, there's probably a decent pair of a uh, Bluetooth speaker you could buy that would sound a bit better than this. I don't I would need to hear some because this sounds pretty good. It's just not it's it's focused on vocals. That's what its audio uh focus is, is just video calls. Um suggest to test with the fan AC on. Oh well the AC is in the other room but I can I can turn the fan on like this. I mean this isn't my normal audio setup because I'm using the zoom right now but think you can hear that the decibels look a little higher 
So that's that's how the zoom mic sounds with the fan on, but the zoom mic is pretty directional. Um, it's easier and better sound quality to use built-in MacBook mics. Yeah, well, this isn't for people with MacBooks. This is for people with tower setups, I guess, because it's made by Microsoft, and there's probably more people just buying little, um, what is it called? Mac mini equivalents, you know, little towers, little desktops, and they wanted something affordable, something cheap that can uh, capture their voice and relay someone else's voice. Let me see. There's probably four people just buying little... Uh, yeah, it's pretty quiet. Yeah, I can't even hear it. Um, am I using LED lighting right now? No, I'm using... Well, it, it, you count that as LED, I guess. The blue light behind me is LED. Now switch... I can't switch to the laptop mic because I'm on my iMac Pro, but... Um, Elizabeth says they can't hear the fan. I bet if I was using my MacBook microphone, you could, but um, those are not MacBook fans. No, that's my desk fan that keeps me cool. Uh, I'll switch to the modern USB-C speaker. So now the mic is coming from this device. Yeah, it's like it goes to almost completely nothing when you're not talking. The decibel rating is definitely much lower. Oh, now it's like starting to pick stuff up. This device. Yeah, it's like it goes to almost completely. So I guess that's voice isolation in real time. Um, I could switch it to the iMac Pro mics. That's probably similar. So if I do this, this is what I sound like with the microphone that's already on the iMac. I'm not sure if I'm covering it up. I might be covering it up with my light bar. No wind noise at all might be a good alternative for hot days when live streaming. It could be, but at a certain point this fan isn't helping. It's just recirculating the same hot hair, hot air. Luckily it's pretty cool in here right now, so it's not really, I'm not sweating. But when it gets to like 90, 100 degrees in here, the fan doesn't really help much. I'm still going to sweat. Um, very impressed all around. Everyone's probably going to say they prefer the iMac mic. At a certain point, this fan isn't helping. It's just recirculating the same hot hair, hot air. Luckily, it's pretty cool in here right now, so it's not really, I'm not sweating. But when it gets to like 90, 100 degrees in here, the fan doesn't really help. All right. That's, voice isolation works very well. Yeah, I guess if you're in a noisy environment, you would want something like that. But, whew. Okay. I think we've unboxed all the Microsoft stuff. As far as I can see, we got a USB-C cable. Um, and thank you to my Microsoft friend that sh shall remain nameless in case any of this is private stuff that's not supposed to get out. I love this traveling case, though. Um, I guess if you're traveling to different desktops, it would be good to have a speaker like this. But I would recommend a laptop at that point, honestly. Um, and I think uh, DeskView did pretty good uh, for covering... What I was unboxing, I think you could see it fairly well. Um, it's probably not better than just using a dedicated top-down camera, which I might do in the future. Um, isn't there a voice isolation option built into macOS anyway? There's supposed to be, but it's not an option. Like, I'm using mics right now, but it doesn't give me the toggle. It's grayed out. It's just mic mode. Um iPhone's at 65%. That's still pretty good. Can I use portrait mode while I'm... Whoa. Yeah, I'm using portrait mode and studio light and desk view. All of the features of continuity camera all at once. That's pretty cool. Um, my turn to stream then. Good unboxing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Me and Randy are fighting over uh, airtime, I guess. I've got a couple minutes left, Randy. Um, no, I want to show something that I want to do. Um, so this is still on center stage mode, but, uh, yeah, Studio Light still has a hard time tracking. I think you were ready for a haircut. I do too, but life is busy sometimes. Let me instantly make the webcam quality look much, much better. It's very simple. You just turn off center stage, and then it defaults to the main lens, and boom, it has the much better lens attachment, so I think it looks sharper this way. But I think uh, if I really wanted a good top-down view angle, I could probably just s leave it off, leave center stage off. I'll turn off everything, actually. 
and then because it's wireless I could find a way to mount this whoa you don't need to rotate stop like this you know what I'm saying and I would just make it actually top down and then I could okay this is gonna be kinda hard but I'm gonna do it uh, super clean good colors really amazing if I switch to HD camera then I could do an unboxing with the iPhone straight down and the iPhone is my B cam and then I'll use the iMac webcam or my MacBook webcam as my face cam so you can see me and you can see the keyboards and stuff and it doesn't look all distorted it looks much more natural <laughs> we could show off the focus thing the autofocus is like Woo. Now you can actually see these in exquisite detail here. Um, can you continuity camera two iPhones? As far as I'm aware, no. I don't think you can. Uh, but I haven't tried, to be fair. Here, now you can see it in all its beauty. This is probably my favorite product of the day. Oh, no. Actually, the Ocean Mouse is pretty cool but this I actually could see myself using I need to remap a few things but having a compact black keyboard which looks a lot better than the full-size one that doesn't use a lightning cable thank God with a 36 month battery life and using this key I can switch it between my MacBook and my iMac Pro or even my iPad I could switch it to my iPad I didn't even think about that but um, that would require me to use the iPad um, you can still use desk view and point the camera top down and it should follow things around. Uh, desk view still does the weird thing where it tries to like track. There would be no point is my, my answer. There, if you had the main sensor activated, there would be no need. So this is the uh, more ergonomic mouse. This is the design thing I was trying to tell you about. Like This goes way back and then it kind of blends into itself, which is kind of clean. But yeah, it's a nice soft material, and you can switch between devices like that. It just needs uh, batteries, which it doesn't have. But that's okay. We've got enough mice in use already. These two might be helpful if I was doing more gaming. No, the keyboard doesn't recharge. It has, uh, I think, they're like um, AirTag batteries. And you put a little semi-eject thing in there and then slide it out but it should still last 36 months on a charge uh oh I just dropped something and then this is the little speaker that I was trying out with the built-in mics and stuff but you guys gotta see that like this is so cool this little cable thing it just hides within the side maybe I haven't used a product that does that before but it works pretty well it's pretty clean I just realized continuity camera doesn't work on my Tennis Max. It's A13 and newer. Yeah, I don't have two phones with the A13 or newer, unfortunately. So, um, can I plug this in? Yeah. I'm not able to test if you can do two at once, but I'm guessing someone would have done it by now if you could. And I haven't seen anyone. You can just wind up the cable like this. I feel like you can see better when I just do it this way. And when you're done, there's the Type C. This folds back. Um, there we go. Embeds like that. Hidden. Can't see it at all. Just a cute little base with a cute little traveling case. How beautiful. Just slide in like that. Pretty neat. I wonder if the... Yeah, it'd be nice if these things came with a traveling case too, but I guess they're probably going to stay with their, with their computer. Oh, this is a dial I just discovered. It's just like the Surface headphones. Maybe that's what I was touching. I don't know what that controls. Maybe that's your volume? And then, yeah, the mic on it unfolds like that. But, yeah... Room for improvement. Um, their emphasis is likely on affordability, and I guess I'm more of an Apple sheep, so I'm looking more for like premium features and stuff. 
this is a little keypad. But um, A plus on making a mouse using ocean plastic. That that must have been challenging. Um, you know, a bunch of plastic that's just floating around in the ocean, and they were like, hey, let's make it do something important. Let's make it do something valuable. So hopefully that gets some good use out of it. Still kind of a classic uh, legacy sounding click. Um, it does look like a small MX Master. This mouse does. Yeah, you're right. But yeah, I know this is a bit different than what we're used to streaming about. I normally am not reviewing Microsoft products and that kind of thing. Um, I'm just making sure I didn't miss anything. It's a lot of stuff to unbox. But uh, here, why don't I get rid of that and then put myself up here. This is hopefully in the future how more of my live streams will look with the main with the main camera because this is definitely the best webcam you can possibly get <laughs> um, with uh, this lighting and this focusing on dynamic range you know you can just hold stuff up and it looks like a real camera like how sharp it gets and it switches in focus oh it's so cool so it's, it's basically like built-in cinematic mode except it actually works um, cinematic modes kind of spotty but yeah thank you uh thank you all for tuning in during this uh stream you know what i want to stay live until randy starts streaming and then we're gonna raid randy has he started yet you guys gotta remind me i'm gonna look because randy and i keep competing over stream times oh i think he is he said okay he's just getting started but i'm gonna link it just because I want to take over his his stream. Hashtag Microsoft Sheep. <laughs> they may have not convinced me on everything. Like, I, I'm not sure if I have a use for these or a use for the numeric keypad, but I do think I'll try using the compact keyboard. Um, and I'll probably just leave this mouse connected to my... Uh, oh, it has a little power button here. That's cool. I'll probably leave the Ocean Mouse connected to my iMac Pro just so that I don't have to worry if... Um, what's it called, uh, universal control fails on me again. But yeah, I linked uh, Randy's stream in the chat so that we can raid him. <laughs> and uh, if I'm playing more games, which I may be in the future over on Talos of Gaming, um, I'll probably use either this mouse or... No, nah, you know what? I like this mouse. I'll probably use this one. Oh, this one would be better, actually, just because it has. I could switch it between devices a lot easier. Um, Randy's from the... Uh, Talos of Tech Podcast, and he makes awesome music using his M1 Pro MacBook, um, or I don't know if that's what he's doing. What did he say? Mood music for background productivity. Cool. So he's playing music, very talented musician, and he's using Center Stage right now. So let's uh, let's rate his stream as I'm wrapping up. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you for the super chats, and uh, I hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care, all. Have a good one. Bye-bye.